Electromagnetic relays are really commonplace in a lot of automotive applications. It's a great way for us to utilize a low current to control a high current. We're gonna talk about how to wire and set up a relay, and we'll talk about the amperage flow, and we'll look at some measurements with our DVOM. We're gonna get started first with this ATEC board. So this ATEC board does a great job with allowing us to make connections and go through the sequence of how do I put together this circuit. The intention here is that if I learn how to assemble the circuit, I hopefully better understand how it works and how it operates, and that should benefit us in the future if we have to go diagnose a problem with a relay. First, let's talk about the relay that we've got and the board we're gonna use. This is an ATEC set board, allows us to put components in different places on here, make connections with the jacks, as well as these jumper wires, and really experiment and try to work through how do I get current flow from the positive side to the negative side in order to make it circuit work. They do a great job with a circuit breaker inside so that if I make mistakes, I'm typically not gonna damage anything on this board. Let's start with this relay and how it operates. So a relay, as we mentioned, is a great way to control a high current or high load with a small current or a small load. And this is a great way for us to control things like fuel pumps and cooling fans and other items that take quite a bit of load and quite a bit of current and we want a module to control them. Small computer modules don't have a hot, great ability for high current. So this relay helps to eliminate that problem. The other thing that it helps with is that if I put this relay out in the engine bay near the cooling fan, I greatly decrease the amount of wire that has to carry a higher amperage going from the fan to the battery to the control source. And so I cut down on use of wire and looms and harnesses at that point. Inside this, there's a small electromagnetic switch. And one part of this relay is dedicated to operating that switch. And so it needs a small amount of current and a volt drop in order to energize that coil. And when the electromagnetic coil is energized, it magnetically pulls a switch closed, which closes a set of contacts on the other side. Many relays have two points of flow on the action side. This one is one of those relays. And so there are five total pins here. Two go to my coil, they help control the load. The other three then are part of my action circuit and my load circuit. Two of those points are set up as normally closed. We often see that expressed on diagrams as NC. Normally closed means that if I put a connection here and I put a connection down here, there is continuity or flow, the ability for continuity that exists even with this relay off. When it gets energized, that point goes on over to my other contact here, and that's my normally open position. A lot of relays will have those points, not all of them do. Sometimes I'll get a relay and we'll see that there's a point for it on the bottom, but it's been clipped off. It wasn't manufactured with that point to be utilized. Say I don't have the service information and I don't have the diagram on the outside of the relay. What could I do to figure out what all these different pins mean and do within my circuit. There's one way that I can get started with this process and think about it. One is a visual inspection. I could look at the different terminals that are on here and typically a lot of my relays will have different size pins. If my relay didn't have any kind of drawing on it, I would first want to figure out where is my coil in terms of these pin assignments. And so I could figure that out by taking my DVOM and checking for resistance. Most relays on the coil side have anywhere from 60 to 120 ohms worth of resistance. And so I could take my leads and begin testing. I know that I should find the normally closed switch, which I appear to have found that here. So that is part of the load side or action side of the circuit. You can see it's pretty minimal resistance. That is just a switch that is currently closed. I move over. This is the other wire from those larger terminals on this relay. It is open. So I'm pretty certain that those three contribute to my action circuit. If I go to the other side and check that, here I get 70 ohms. That 70 ohms is the resistance of the electromagnetic coil on the control side of the relay. With my relay coil identified and knowing where the control side of this relay is at, let's go ahead and set up a circuit to make this relay work. So I'm gonna utilize my ATEC board here, turn it on. 
I've got 12 volts up at the top on this red pin. I'm gonna take that to F on my relay board here. The other pin that we saw to have resistance was pin D. And so I'm gonna put a connection at D and we're gonna utilize this momentary switch in order to control the relay. I get all that hooked up and if I push my button, I can hear an audible click coming from the relay. That click is some confirmation that movement is happening, which generally means that the electromagnetic portion is functioning and is moving and pulling the switch closed. What we gotta be careful about is that the audible click is just one part of the sequence. It's not a way that we can really confirm that this relay has the ability to function properly. So I need to go further. So let's talk about what happened and then we'll look at connecting and verifying the other side. So what I did was take 12 volts into the relay coil and provided ground through this momentary switch. This relay coil needs 12 volts in ground. It needs to be able to drop 12 volts in order to function. Let's move on over to the action side of the circuit now. One of the things to really keep in mind with relays is that internally in this little box, there is no physical connection for electricity between the control side and the action side. And so I provided 12 volts up here, but there's no voltage or current flow on the action side of the circuit at this point. We can confirm what's going on with this by using our meter. And so if I set my meter to do a continuity check, right now we're in the normally closed position and I'm getting an audible beep from my meter to show that I've got continuity. Once I press this button, that goes away because now I've gone to the other position of the switch. And so I can move my meter over there, repeat that. Right, so now I've got an open circuit with the relay off because I'm in the normally open position, meaning that's the position of open circuit when this relay is off. But when it is energized or turned on, I get continuity. This helps me understand what to do next if I want to complete this circuit to control something. We're gonna take this small 194 light bulb and set it up so that my relay controls it. So we're gonna put that light bulb right down here. Remember, I need to take 12 volts and provide it to the action side. So I've gotta take another connection of 12 volts here at the top. I'm going to the E, which is part of where we checked our continuity. And we saw that A, the pin assignment down here in the center, is where my normally open position was. And so I'm gonna make a connection there, go to my light bulb, go to ground. We get all this set up, we push the button, we get a light bulb. Let's talk about the current flow and what's happening here. So on the one side of the control, I've still got my 12 volts going into the coil, and then I've provided a ground path here through my momentary switch. On the action side of things, I've taken 12 volts, I'm coming into the relay, it's going through that switch when that switch is closed, and that allows this 12 volts to come out, go to my light bulb, and then I've got ground on the other side of that bulb. One of the things I really like about setting up this board as we go through early students with relay circuits is that it's really easy to create this visual kind of divide between the two sides of my control and action circuits. I can really see a path where just this side is gonna do my control, just this side is going to do my action. And I'm really deliberate in having us set up just control first, see that that works, and then add the action side separately. The next thing we wanna do is look at how different are the current flows between these sides. We talked about a relay being used to control high current with a low current. I've got my meter here and it's set up to measure amps. And so in order to do this measurement, I've gotta take my leads and remember that this meter has to be in series to conduct a current measurement. So if I want to look at the current flow that goes through this coil, I need to be in series with this half of the circuit. So that means I've gotta unplug something, put my meter in place, and make the circuit work again. And so to do that, we're gonna utilize this connection down here by my switch. I'm gonna pull that out, just move it aside, I'm gonna take my red lead, make a connection where I unplugged my lead from. My black lead, I'm gonna reconnect the circuit on the wire that I pulled out. 
And so then this allows a constant flow where I can go through the coil, through the switch, through the meter, and back to ground. So as long as my fuse on my meter is good, I push the switch, it comes on. This particular relay with about 70 ohms of resistance and 12 volts, I'm getting just under two tenths of an amp worth of current draw. Let's compare that now to the light bulb. How much does this light bulb draw? I'm gonna repeat the same measurement. I've got to make a disconnection in the circuit put my meter in place where that was. It looks like we've got just over 0.2 amps worth of draw on this, a little bit higher than my control on my relay side, but that's largely because this bulb is so small. With this small 194 bulb, there's not a lot of amperage change. That doesn't show the difference between the two sides of the circuit very well. So let's go ahead and unplug this and we'll put in a larger bulb. I'm gonna go ahead and measure current just like we did before. So with this larger bulb, we've got two amps worth of current. So we went from having about 0.196 on the control side of the relay, and we've got about two amps on the action and load side right now. Keep in mind, that's why we use a relay, is that we can put that low control current on one side and use it to drive a higher current like the two amp light bulb on this side. At the end of the day, my power supply up here does have to provide that total. And so we can do a quick experiment just to verify that. If I put my light bulb back in the circuit and I put my meter up top here, we've got about 2.1 amps, which is the sum of my control side and my action side with this larger bulb. That's our video for how a relay functions and how to get one set up, as well as do a little bit of the testing. This type of structure is very common in cars. We see a lot of relays controlling things. And it's gonna be useful to have this knowledge as you go through testing and diagnosing different circuits within a car. It's also useful that if you decide to add things to your car to know how these relay circuits work. It's really much safer, say you put fog lights on your car or underglow, something like that, some accessory. It's much safer to use a relay with a switch controlling it rather than run a lot of cable straight from the battery, through the interior of the car, through jams, things like that. So consider a relay whenever you go to add some kind of high load circuit like that.